This is an inverter and this is a UPS. You know, I always used to think the inverter and the UPS were the same thing. <laughs> I mean, from the face value, both of them are designed to give you emergency electricity in situations of power cut. I am in the dark, somebody help me! This is the dark, I'm scared of the dark! Whew. that was something. I was really scared of the dark. All right, cause the both of them are connected to the grid. So when you have a power cut, both of them will provide you with emergency electricity, almost instant. And now this has informed my belief all along that the both of them are the same thing. So which means if both of them can provide you with emergency electricity, that means you can deploy both for the same purpose. Can you do that? Is there really any difference between these two appliances? I mean the inverter and the UPS. Let's find out. You welcome back guys, my name is Ikenna from Smiling Sun. Everything solar installation, everything inverter installation, everything going green. And today we're looking at the inverter and the UPS. What are the differences between these two devices, all right? Both of them are designed to give you emergency electricity. That's emergency energy during a power cut. Both are plugged to the grid. All right, so your grid is connected to the UPS and the grid, of course, is also connected to the inverter. All right, so in situations when you have a power cut, when you have like a blackout, this is meant to supply you with instant electricity. All right, so let us look at what exactly could be the differences between these two devices. But if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time, all right? That's when you can proudly say, I'm part of this great energy community, all right? <laughs> <laughs> and I will say welcome with all my heart. Don't forget to comment, don't forget to share, and don't forget to like, okay? So if you have something you want us to talk about, something you've been finding extremely very difficult to figure out, you know what to do. Comment below and I will attend to it. And who knows, I might do you a full video just to help you straighten it out. Okay, so it's important that you comment, tell me what it is, and be in touch, and I will definitely let you know, okay? So let's look at the inverter and the UPS. What exactly is the difference? So the very first major difference is between the two of them is the switch on time. So the both of them are meant to provide you with instant electricity as soon as you have a power cut. All right, but the question is how fast? What's the rates? What's the speed? Now the UPS is pretty fast, okay? So as soon as you have a power cut, the UPS gives you instant energy at five milliseconds, between two to five milliseconds, and that is crazy. <laughs> All right, while well, the inverter is gonna be lagging behind in this situation, so an inverter is gonna be giving you instant energy at the rates of 300 to 500 milliseconds, all right? So it's not ideal for very sensitive appliances like your computer. So that's why you have the UPS always attached to the computer. It's because the computer is very sensitive uh, to the time lag when it comes to switching on to electricity. So this does it with a speed of five to, with a speed of three to five milliseconds. And that's pretty amazing. While the inverter comes at a speed of between 300 and 500 milliseconds. So this might not be ideal for very sensitive appliances like your computers, your medical machines, your servers, and some appliances appliances that needs a lot of hours to start up all right and if this is used directly on your pc um your computers will notice that time lag of between 300 to 500 milliseconds all right and this is very harmful to your hard drive and power cuts does a whole lot of damage to your hard drive by giving it a shock and the shock reduces the health and of course can lead to a potential crash of your hard drive. So the inverters are not very ideal for sensitive appliances like your computers because of the hard drive. Okay, so that's why you have the UPS always attached to your computers, okay, to your medical machines and of course your servers because the servers definitely should never have to shut down so that the communications are not lost and of course the computers so that the data would not be lost. So the switch on time is definitely the first major difference between these two uh, devices which is your UPS and your inverter. 
Another difference between the UPS and the inverter is the hold on time. The UPS doesn't hold on for that long. The UPS holds on between uh, five minutes to 30 minutes while the inverter is almost like forever. It just keeps rolling, all right? So it's tireless, it's built to run round the clock. This can only hold on power for you between five and 30 minutes. So the hold on power is very short as regards to UPS. The inverter gives you a longer backup time, gives you a longer running time while the UPS gives you a very little time between five and 30 minutes. So the hold on time is less on the UPS and more on the inverter. So my inverter, for instance, runs round the clock because I'm completely off grid. All right, so it runs round the clock. It doesn't shut down okay but you don't do that with a ups the ups is meant to provide you with a very limited amount of time between 5 to 30 minutes or a little bit more okay so um, the backup time in the ups is a lot shorter than that of the inverter that goes on and on and on So the next major difference between the UPS and the inverter is that inside of the UPS, you have a battery. All right, so the UPS comes with an internal battery. Okay, while the inverter has to be connected to an external battery. Okay, so these are the cells of a lithium ion phosphate battery. While the inverter is always connected to an external battery, external deep cycle battery. So it could be a tubular battery, it could be AGM, it could be gel. The inverter is meant to be connected to an external battery so um the ups you don't have so much wire because all the wires and everything is on the inside but you're going to require a lot of wire to connect the inverter to the external deep cycle battery okay so this is a difference between the two of them one comes with an internal battery and the other one needs to be connected to an external deep cycle battery so the ups comes pre-equipped with an internal battery let's take a look on the inside of the ups all right so I'll open it up so that you can see the batteries that are contained in the um, UPS. Okay, so I have all the screws out. So let's take a look on the inside of the UPS to see what the batteries look like. So all the screws are out from the sides and the back of the UPS. So let's have a quick look on the inside to see the type of batteries that you have provided for the UPS. Here you go. So inside here you have um, 7.5 amps, 12 volt each, but it's parallel to give you 24 volts serving for this. So the inverter, uh, the UPS converts that energy from this battery uh, to be able to supply that emergency energy when the when there's a power cut. So it takes the energy from this battery and of course you have the rectifiers here and all of that. So it supplies the appliance that is attached to it. So usually very sensitive appliances like your computers um, attached to it. So it makes use of this battery. Then it also uses, converts the um, AC to be able to charge the batteries and then converts this DC to supply the very attached appliances. So you can see the batteries but for the inverters, the inverters are connected to external batteries, okay, external deep cycle batteries. So you can choose any battery you want. Uh, you can choose a lithium ion phosphate battery. You can choose a flooded lead acid battery, any battery at all. Okay, so um, you connect the inverter to an external batteries. Another significant difference between the UPS and the inverter is the functions. Uh, the inverter has more functions than the UPS. There's a lot of things you can do in the inverter that you can do in the UPS. So let me give an example. You can periodically set your inverter to equalize your tubular batteries once every 15 days, once every 30 days, once in two months, once in six months, whatever you choose. Your inverters can bulk charge your batteries move on to absorb your batteries and then comes into float you can use it to directly equalize your batteries whenever you want to 
but in the ups you don't have such luxuries or such functions and not available in your ups so the ups pretty much charges your battery straight up and doesn't charge it to its full value and if this continues over time the batteries will not last as much as it would have lasted with a system that can care for the battery exactly the way it should like a system that ensures that the battery goes through all the cycles of charge so the deep cycle batteries that are connected to the inverter will definitely last longer because the inverter does all the three cycles of charge but in the ups that wouldn't be the case because the battery will last a lot less longer because it's not going through the three cycles of charge okay so here is a difference between the two of them The inverter is equipped with the function of shutting down your batteries when it gets to the 50% threshold. Of course, you know, if you're not using a lithium battery, you're not meant to exceed the 50% threshold uh, for these batteries like the flooded lead acid battery, your tubular battery, the AGM, the gel. Once your battery crosses that line of 50%, you're endangering the cells of the battery. And because of that fact, the inverter has been provided with that function to ensure that the battery is shut down once it gets to the line of 50 percent to ensure that the 50 percent threshold is not exceeded in the battery all right but for the ups it keeps going it doesn't have that control for as long as the the ups is turned on and there's a power cut the battery keeps going until the battery is completely flat and if that happens over time the cells of the battery will die and the lifespan of the battery will shorten and the battery will go quickly all right so it doesn't have that function to shut down the battery like an inverter will shut down the battery as soon as the battery gets to the 50 percent threshold the inverter will shut it down So let's look at the load intake of the UPS and the inverter. The UPS is not meant to take so much load, all right? So it's actually attached to, so that's why you see it attached to very specific devices like your computers, your medical machines and facilities, and of course your servers to ensure that when you have that power cut, you don't lose any data or the servers don't shut down. But the inverters are meant for very heavy loads. It's meant to run tirelessly. It's meant to carry as much load that you would also uh, pretty much subject to your grid. So whatever your grid does, your inverter can also do as long as you increase the KVA. So you just keep increasing the KVAs from one to two to three to five to even a hundred KVA or more just keep increasing it okay so it can handle as much load as you subject it to but that's not the same case with the ups the ups is meant for very specific appliances so, so it's attached to it so in events of power cord it provides it with emergency electricity thank you very much that's all we got time for today if you haven't subscribed what are you waiting for click the subscription button right now and be officially part of this solar energy community we would love you to be here okay don't forget to comment don't forget to share and do not forget to like if there's anything like i always say that you're finding very very difficult to figure out just comment below i will definitely attend to it either by replying your comment i could do a full video to fully explain to you that same issue that is so difficult for you to figure out so that you understand it and the very simplest of terms thank you so much guys and see you in the next one